Okay, so today I have another piece of industrial automation. This is a output module, ABB Asa Brown Boveri, I do believe that is. And this is a relay contact output module. You see the date that it was put into service, which is December 21st of 2023, as we number our stuff here in the United States. And so this recently failed. And I'm going to put up a video. And so this thing, basically, we use four of the outputs, one, two, three, and four, to pulse on and off solenoids to provide air to a system in my plant. And this thing operates about one pulse per second, possibly even faster. You guys let me know what you think when you look at the uh, video here. So I'm going to try to get this thing open. I think it does pop open fairly easily. I've had these apart in the past. And so I don't care if it's ruined. It's scrap at this point. No, it does not want to cooperate. There it goes. And so there is the faceplate on it right there and the nomenclature. As you can see, this is a DO820 module. And then there is the back side of the circuit board. And then there is the front side of the circuit board. Uh, some little MOVs across the relay contacts, I would expect. Opto isolators to provide power to the relay contacts because uh, this does operate, let's see if we can zoom in on this very slightly and maybe stay focused. Yes, um, I thought it said uh, 10 amps, 250 volt resistive are the, what the contacts are rated at. And we're not running this thing anywhere near that. I think we're running it at probably half an amp or so. But there are the relay contacts, 10 amps at 30 volts or 250 volts AC. I should say 30 volts DC. One third horsepower, 125 volts AC. Half horse at 250 volts AC. Takamasawa, is that who makes those? Eight amps, 250 volts AC. That might be the break current, not the make current. But let's take a look at this board. Pretty well constructed. Definitely got a coating on the circuit board to perfect it, prevent it from attracting moisture, I should say. Microprocessor right there. M, is it? Yeah, MBI-1 6178-001. Uh, and then a bunch of little surface mount components here. Probably to facilitate data communication. Uh, because there is, oh, that's the output side, there is that connector, that is the data communication to this module. And it does look like it basically connects into this module right there. So like I said, I'm going to show you a video. And the problem I was having was with output number one, this relay contact right there. And it does show uh, 12 volt relay contacts right there. It looks like the date of possibly on the relays 195089. I'm not sure what that is. But like I said, this was put into service in December of 2023. And so doing just a little tiny bit of math on this, if this thing pulses at one time per second, basically times 486 days was how long this was put into service. It might have been out of service for a day or two, uh, but yeah, here's what I come up with. 41,990,400 pulses. So I'm gonna show you the video here in just a moment. And I think it's actually pulsing faster than one time per second, but you guys can let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so when I show you the video, pay attention to the bar graph on my 117 only, not to the voltage readout, because the bar graph on these 117 meters, 
which is what I use at my work, uh, the bar graph is almost instantaneous. Let's put this on ohms and I'll set it here. And I got it tangled up in my mic cord, but I'm going to set it in the 600 volt or the uh, 600 ohm range and see as I'm clicking the leads together, the bar graph definitely responds much faster than the display does. So keep an eye on the bar graph in the video and here is the video. So here's a quick look at the bottom of the board. Uh, just for all the contacts, these are LEDs that illuminate on the front of the unit. Pretty well constructed, I must say. It's meant for an industrial application where things are not as good as they may seem. But uh, yeah, very, very nice construction. And then it does talk about uh, the thermal ranges here, uh, plus five degrees Celsius. I believe that's above ambient TA, um, up to a max of plus 55 degrees Celsius. Probably not going to last too terribly long at those temperatures. But anyhow, I thought that uh, everyone might enjoy taking a look at the inside of this ABB DO820 output module. Incidentally, I did think about pulling these relays out and taking a look at the inside of them, but they are potted relays. So I'd have to cut the case open uh, just to look at the contacts. I believe it had a failing contact in the unit. Well, I was incorrect about what relay operates the number one output. It is this bottom relay and not the top relay. So I went ahead and unsoldered the bottom relay completely right here. And I thought I'd go ahead and just attach an ohmmeter to it and uh, give it some power and see what it wants to do. Take a look at the ohm readings and see if we get any inconsistencies. Hopefully heating up those leads didn't make too much of an impact on the relay itself. So let's get some leads attached and no meter, supply 12 volts DC to it and see what it wants to do. One moment. Okay, so I've got the contact set up with the relay and I've got 12 volts right here. Definitely don't want to hold on to both leads at the same time because it will zap you with the counter EMF from the relay coil. So, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, wow, 0 0.0203, 0 0.0203. Well, all I can figure is because I soldered on it, the heat might have brought it back to life. But as you can see in the video, it was definitely fluctuating all over the place. 0 0.03, I'd like to see like a 0 0.08. 0 .08. Of course, those double clicks aren't helping. Point oh four, so that changed. Point oh two. I'm surprised this thing's working after what was it, forty one million contacts. So let's go ahead and just give it some constant voltage, and then we'll give the relay a tappy tap tap.
and it's staying perfectly sound. Interesting. But we were seeing between 0.02 and 0.04 ohms. Well, that is very interesting that it is working perfectly now. Let me go ahead and double check my lead integrity here. So it should go to zero, zero. When I touch them together. And yeah, point, there it is, zero, zero. Okay, so leads are good. There's 0.04. Remember, I'm measuring with virtually no current whatsoever. Let's get the ohmmeter out and see what it has to say. Okay, ohmmeter is set up now. Let's go to ohms, and I'm going to put it in the 60, 600 ohm range. I'm sorry. 0 0.03. 0 0.03. Yeah, it's making a liar out of me. But that's what happens. Anyhow, certainly hope you enjoyed the analysis on this defective module after 41 million cycles or more. Like I said, let me know what you think. Oh, look at that. Probably just breaking the contacts, if I had to guess. Anyhow, there you go. The ABB DO820 output module with 41 million cycles on the four relays. Well, shoot, I did go ahead and pry the contacts open. And, uh, this moves forward to close those contacts, but look how rough and pitted those things are. It's very hard to see in there, but they look absolutely terrible. This side should be okay. There's no current on that side, but that... So as you're looking at this, uh, the center contact, the one that moves, is the common, and then... The right-hand contact is the normally closed, and the left-hand contact is the normally open. So that's where the contact is actually made between the center and the left-hand side. And really hard to see, but you can see a bunch of crud built up on that contact. And yes, the red stuff is blood. It leaked out because it fucked. Oops, freaking poked me. <laughs> Yeah, look at the contact surface. It's all pitted and all nasty right there. Okay, there you go. The internal view of the relay contacts. Oh, I know I keep saying that I'm done, but second chances, right? So this left-hand contact, this one right there, that's the one that has no current. This is the contact, the movable contact with current. This is the stationary contact, the normally open contact. And so let's see if I can get this. So like I said, that is the stationary non-current carrying contact, the normally closed contact. This one should be the movable portion you can see all the arc marks on that side. And then hopefully I can flip this over and, oh, no, nope, sorry, my bad. That's the normally closed side of the contact. So let's get that out of the way and we shall get this one into view. So that is the normally open side. And then as I rotate it, that is the normally closed side just with basically scuff marks from making and breaking. Uh, no connection per se. No current carrying connection. I wonder if it wipes. Yeah, it's just 
impact marks basically but that that side is the side that carries all of the current okay there you go last time i promise everyone have a great day thanks for watching once again bye bye I hope everyone enjoyed this. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Once again, everyone, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great day once again. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.